Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. You've tuned into Digital Ocean Tech Talk Solution Series. My name is Cynthia, and I lead community engagement for Digital Ocean, especially for Asia Pacific and EMEA markets. I will be a moderator for today's session, and I'm super excited to have all of you join us today. This series is where we bring in insights from the cloud industry, latest developer technology trends and topics, and also some really cool organizations showcasing exciting use cases in real time. As you all know, today's edition is on gaming. We have two wonderful speakers, Diego Horsha and Fabian Barajas. Let me introduce the speakers. Our first speaker for the day, Diego Horsha, leads a team of backend engineers at PlayKids. Although he considers himself a generalist, he's been building critical large-scale distributed systems for more than seven years. As a computer scientist, he thrives in applying theory and research to build solutions that are both efficient and elegant. Our second speaker for the day, Fabian, my colleague, is a senior solutions engineer and has been with DigitalOcean for almost five years. In that time, he has helped numerous customers migrate and build their applications on DO across different use cases and segments. His background is in Linux system administration and deploying into public cloud environments. Thank you for joining us, Diego and Fabian. I, I would like to highlight a few housekeeping rules. Throughout the session, you will have access to the chat window. Please feel free to share your questions through the chat. My colleague Mohan and I will be moderating the chat window and our speakers will be ha happy to answer your questions at the last 15 minutes of this session. Given the current work from home scenario that all of us are in, we are hosting this session from different locations across the globe. So please bear with this if there are any bandwidth challenges. In case during the session, if you have any audio or video challenges, we kindly request you to restart your GoToWebinar portal. But yes, this session is being recorded. So the recording will be shared with all of you by email next week. And we will also host a recording on DigitalOcean YouTube channel. Let's move on to our topic for today. It is modern game server infrastructure in the cloud. I have a quick fun fact on gaming for all of you. A recent article on Tech Judy stated that there are 2.7 billion gamers worldwide in 2020. Yes, you heard it right. It's 2.7 billion gamers. And Asia remains the region with the highest number of gamers contributing to about 1.5 billion. To top it off, another fun fact is that 45% of US gamers are women. Interesting, right? If you have any such fun facts on gaming or thoughts about gaming as an industry and gaming technologies, please feel free to share with us on the chat. Let me walk you uh, through the agenda. Diego will address some of the tech trends seen by the gaming industry and also speak to how one can deploy a highly scalable multiplayer gaming system with optimized cost. Fabian will talk about how DigitalOcean can be leveraged to accomplish your gaming infrastructure goals. And the last 15 minutes is exclusively set up to answer your live questions. All right, without further ado, let's move on to the session presenting to you, Diego Horsha. Over to you, Diego. Hello, guys. Thanks for joining. Uh, I'm, I'm pleased to have the opportunity to talk a little bit to you guys about what we do at FlickKids and uh, what we're building uh, with the help of, of DO. And uh, to start my, my presentation, I, I would like to introduce you guys to my company. We are PlayKids. We build uh, high-quality mobile uh, apps for kids. Uh, we have been uh, producing high-quality apps since 2013, and our, our first app was uh, the PlayKids app, uh, and it's an app that uh, series delivers educational books, uh, cartoons, and, and activities for small children. And since launching, we quickly began to uh, become uh, a, a worldwide reference on how to build digital products. And since then, we're, we have been experimenting with tons of diff different products. And uh, more recently, we have we began working on the gaming market, as we saw that it was a growing market, uh, especially on, on, on mobile and with 
free you know, with new business models focused focus on, on free games you know, sort of with uh, special uh, paid content. And what I'll be talking about right now would, would be especially about how we maintain our, our main game, which is uh, PTXD. It's a game that we launched uh, a year and a few months ago. But uh, we have, it, it has been a, an incredible success for us. And especially now during the pandemic, we have seen uh, our games taking, uh, receiving much more attention from, 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 uh, from our audience because we have a, a growing user base. And, uh, and <clears throat> right now, uh, especially skiing, this game has been a, an incredible challenge. And I want to talk to you guys a little bit about how we did it. Uh, if you don't know our game, uh, PKXD is a real-time multiplayer social game, which means that uh, you, in our game, you interact with other players. And it's not a competitive game. It's actually a game where you uh, enter to, to interact with other players, you express yourself through, through your avatar, like I'm trying in this first picture. Uh, you, you have your own house and you have your own uh, pets and friends. And uh, we just want our, our, our players to, to have fun and, and have a way to interact with other people. And we also are really concerned about how to, to make it safe for, for kids and anyone at any age to join and just have fun and, and don't be concerned about uh, meeting someone that's uh, uh, in, in contention. And uh, a little bit about what our game has achieved. We are currently one of the five most played games in, in, in Brazil. Uh, we're a house. We also have a, a, a very big user base in, in US and Europe. Uh, here in Brazil, we are constantly trending on, on YouTube among uh, the most famous uh, YouTubers on, on, on YouTube. And just to give you uh, a sense of what an achievement that is, uh, the other games that are currently trending in Brazil are Minecraft, uh, Roblox, Fortnite, and Free Fire. So, we're really competing in, in the market where there are uh, extremely large companies investing and, and, and they are also very talented and they are building really great games. So it's really incredible what our, our company, which is uh, much more than them, uh, can achieve. And I'll, I'll hopefully I'll, I'll be able to show you guys uh, how we can do that uh, and how we need to be efficient to, to do that in competing in these markets. Uh, we currently have tens of millions of, of players worldwide. And at any given moment, we have hundreds of thousands of players playing our game. So uh, from a infrastructure point of view, that's an incredible challenge for us. And I would like to show you guys a little bit of our game. I, brought you a small trailer from our game, just to you guys uh, get to know it a little bit. I, will, I would also like to invite you guys to uh, download our game on, on Play Store and App Store. Uh, it's a free game, uh, and I hope you guys enjoy it. It's, a, it's really fun. And if you want, you can uh, you can suggest any, any new features, and 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 you can uh, give a review on on the App Store or Play Store. Um, let me talk a little bit about uh, what what's uh, what's the problem that my team uh, is focused on on solving, and. To support this game, my team is responsible for all the infrastructure for this game. It's, uh, as I said, it's a real-time multiplayer game. 
So we we have uh, hundreds of, of thousands of players connected to our game servers uh, at any given moment, and we have to do it uh, in a friction and interruption free, uh, giving a, fr a friction interruption free experience. Uh, we don't want uh, our players being disconnected from our game. We don't want them having trouble to join our game. We want them to have a, a really good experience so they always come back. Uh, and as I said, it's a, it's a free game. So we also want as many people as possible joining our game because that's the way that we can attract uh, paying users else also. Uh, and attract attention from 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 other people, other other users, uh, and it also helps uh, from a, a marketing uh, point of view because if we have uh, many players and we have uh, streamers and, and YouTubers uh, broadcasting our game, we we get tons of attention and we we have a larger paying user base. But the counterpoint of that is that our infrastructure ha has to be very cost efficient. And what that means is that for uh, a given player, we need to spend as little as possible to give the experience that we want. So uh, because having tons of players uh, increases our, our cost. And the final point is that my our company is really small, as I said before, and my team is also very small. So uh, time is our most precious resource. And to achieve what, what we're trying to achieve, we need to automate as much as possible and make sure that things uh, kind of ju just work. And our solution is really in the independent from us and it needs as little as intervention from my team as possible. And uh, what I'll show you guys is a little bit about how we do that and how you guys can can also um, make a build a solution where you you can scale your solution uh, as needed as uh, as the user demand from from your, your game uh scales and how you can automate everything so you don't have to uh allocate part of your team to, to maintain the solution and and keep it alive <clears throat> uh initially our solution was very simple we had uh, our game servers uh running directly on on ec2 uh machines from from aws and uh, but as our game grew it became really hard to, to manage everything. So we had to uh, <clears throat> intervene a lot to deploy new game servers, scale them on, on, on more machines. And it also was not uh, as cost, cost efficient as we wanted uh, because uh, we had to manually scale our, our infrastructure up and down. And the down part, if we, we couldn't do it uh, as frequently as frequently as we wanted uh, because we had to do it man manually. So we always had uh, a lot of resources being, being <coughs> spent unnecessarily. Uh, for a new solution, uh, we started off by uh, defining how our game, uh, our game server uh, worked. So we had a, a more predictable uh, game server running, which uh, communicate uh, through a persistent TCP connection with our our game uh, on the mobile devices of our users, and after that we profiled our game servers and we could uh, define how much CPU and memory our game server needed to to run well. And once we we knew that, and we could uh, predict how much resource. We, we need it for our game. We <clears throat> made them run inside containers with CPU and memory limits. So that way we had uh, a, a predictable uh, and replicatable uh, resource usage. And that's really important because 
then you can uh, easily calculate how much uh, how, how much memory and CPU you need, you, you need for a, for a given user base, and you can easily have re replicate that. And by running inside the container, you have a, a, a uh, a known environment for your game server to, to run, and especially a replicatable environment for it. Yeah. After that, uh, by having a, a reliable and, and well sized uh, containers, uh, we began replicating it inside uh, instances. Uh, now we migrated our, our game service from running on AWS to running on CPU optimized droplets on, on DigitalOcean. Uh, as, as I said, because we know how, how much CPU and memory we need for each container, uh, we know exactly that we can run up to six game servers or up to six uh, containers inside a, a single droplet. And we choose the CPU optimized droplets because it's, it's best matched our CPU to memory ratio that we that we uh, observe from our our game server running inside the container. And we also choose we are currently using uh, C4 CPU optimized droplets, and <clears throat> we choose that size of a of a droplet instead of a larger one or, or a smaller one because we can also uh, use that to leverage the the uh, distortions bandwidth allotment for each droplet. Uh, a single C4 uh, droplet has a, an allotment of four terabytes of uh, monthly usage, and a larger one would be, won't wouldn't have a, a, a much more uh, allotment than, than that. So I think a, a C8, which has uh, double the CPU and memory, then a C4 droplet would have only one terabyte extra. So we can leverage uh, the distortion bandwidth allotment. So then we then we don't have to expand extra on on bandwidth overage usage, and that's uh, one of the uh, most important cost cuts that we could have by migrating from, from AWS to, to the Stereo Ocean. And after that, we started using Kubernetes to automate everything uh, and schedule all of our game services and, and also scale our infrastructure automatically. As I said, our, our previous solution required us to scale new EC2 instances Manually, also and also deploy our services to uh, run on these instances manually. Uh, Kubernetes helps a lot because uh, you don't have to do that manually anymore. Uh, it, it, it takes care of automatically scaling and deploying new machines, and also scheduling your your service to to run on these machines uh, without you having to. Intervene in any way. Uh, another problem that we faced was that uh, Kubernetes is not uh, especially made for <clears throat> for game servers. Game servers have a, a, a special trait that where uh, in, it's it's a spaceful service. Uh, it's different from many many other services from. That you generally uh, build for for scalable scalable services. You uh, again server is actually stateful and has persistent connection to to its users. So you can't simply uh, start new new replicas of of, of a game server and kill old ones. You have to be concerned about. Uh, what players are connected to, to each one of your replicas, and what replicas are currently being user, used by 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 any players to to play in a, in a game room, and 
uh, Kubernetes doesn't really know about how to do that. So we actually use uh, a framework called Agonist, which is an open source framework uh, built by Google and, and, and Ubisoft, and especially made for, uh, for gaming. So how it actually works is that you install it on, on a, a Kubernetes cluster, and once you have it, have it installed, it provides tons of, of tools and features on top of Kubernetes to, for you to be able to uh, allocate your services. And by allocate, I mean, uh, it gives you a way to tell Kubernetes that a given replica is currently be, being used and it shouldn't be killed or rescheduled in any way. And it also provides some network features that allow you to connect directly uh, to, a, to a given uh, replica. This is important because uh, when, we, when we're doing matchmaking, we actually want, want to be able to tell to our game in which exactly in which game server it should be connected. Uh, <clears throat> so that way we can uh, place a, a player in the best uh, match or game room uh, for its profile for uh, when you're concerned when you you are concerned with latency and you are concerned in placing your your players in a in a room that's uh, more interesting for for this player. Uh, yeah, and after that, once we had uh, Kubernetes running with our with our game servers being replicated and, and scaling well, and we actually uh, started to, to be concerned about giving the lowest latency, and so we have the smoothest smoothest games gameplay as possible for our players. And because our game is is has a, a user base. Across all over of all over the world, uh, we actually need to make multiple deployments of our infrastructure in different data centers, so we have uh, as little latency as possible. And to do that, we are actually using Rancher. <coughs> uh, Rancher is a is a tool that actually actually helps you manage Kubernetes clusters. So it's especially made for uh, for when you need to manage multiple multiple clusters, and it it actually uh, provides tons of, of tools for you to deploy in multiple cloud providers, and even on on your own uh, on your own machines. Uh, Especially uh, in our case, we are currently using uh, Rancher to deploy a, uh, a cluster in in DigitalOcean, the New York uh, data center, and we also deploy another cluster in uh, Linode on on Europe. Uh, we're currently planning on deploying in, uh, on other locations so we can improve the game experience for for, for players. Uh, that are outside of Europe or US, uh, and Rancher will will help us do it without much effort. Uh, <clears throat> after that, we had we started having some trouble with the with matching and synchronizing uh, the resources that we were running on each uh, Kubernetes cluster. So if we have a new version of our new server that should be released, we have to manually deploy this new version on each uh, Kubernetes cluster. And uh, that's a little bit error prone. Uh, and a few times we, we had some, some, some trouble uh, because we deployed the different versions of our games, our game servers on Europe and US. And that causes us causes some problems. Uh, and to solve that, we actually found this tool that's called uh, Flux CD, which, which is specially made for 
for Kubernetes. And what it does is uh, it provides uh, a, a continuous deployment uh, tools that run inside Kubernetes. So we have it running in each of our clusters. And we, when we want to deploy new, new services on, on these clusters or change any configuration for, for our, our, our game server, we actually just uh, have a Git repository where we configure everything and, it, and Flux uh, automatically deploy these changes on, on all of our clusters. So even if we have uh, tens of, of clusters running all over the world, we only have to do a single operation and then we have uh, everything configured and running automatically uh, by Flux on all of them. And just to show you a little bit of our result, uh, uh, I have in this first graph uh, uh, <clears throat> a timeline of our user base. Uh, as I said, our, our game is uh, has one year old. It's, it's, we, we launched our game in July of, of 2019. And since then, our game uh, uh, grew uh, 50 to 60 times. And uh, we built our, our solution in our first few months. And we have been, been able to, to handle this growth <clears throat> pretty well. And actually, uh, it also helps us reduce uh, our costs significantly. And 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 uh, we didn't have to increase the size of our team to to handle this growth in, in user base. And the other the other image actually shows uh, what happens in a, a deployment in a new deployment of a, a game server. So each line in this graph is actually a fleet of game servers from a from a version running. And you can see, uh, and uh, given then that, that we put down uh, an old version of our Grim servers, and then a few days later we <clears throat> deploy a new version, and each version scales automatically uh, depending on the user base that's uh, running that version of the game, and uh, also our solution scales. Um, following this user demand. So this, this graph is plotting uh, the amount of connected users at any given moment. And you can see that through the day, uh, our, the, the amount of connected users varies but, uh, very widely. And our solution can actually uh, follow this, this curve uh, pretty close. So we don't have any any wasted uh, resources running. And just to give an idea of how efficient from from a, 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 a how efficient our solution is in in how we maintain it, um, this is the thing that that actually built and 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 uh, maintains the solution. It's just two people, and uh, I also want, wanted to to show my team because they're really great guys, and, and they are really uh, they're very talented. Uh, Jose Cieni uh, is the genius behind automating everything and deploying everything on Kubernetes, using Rancher to replicate our deployment on on multiple data centers, uh, monitoring everything with with Prometheus and automating our, our, our continuous de delivery with Flux. And Julio Barros is the engineer behind making our game efficient from a bandwidth point of view. And they, they both have, have been doing great work. And, uh, and our solution is very efficient because uh, they can focus on, on always build new things and, and never uh, and they really have to stop and and intervene and uh, do something to 
to make it make our, our solution uh, work. So they're regular day to day is only to build those features. And we waste uh, almost zero time uh, making sure that our, our solution is running and <clears throat> our, our players are being uh, well served. All right. Thanks for that, Diego. Um, hi, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. Um, so I just want to go over uh, kind of how we support play kids and uh, enable their success on top of uh, DigitalOcean. Um, so the first point is actually our uh, success and support. So like Diego mentioned, they do have uh, players all around the world. Um, so they could require support at any, at any given time of day or night. Um, and our customer success team does work 24-7 uh, and is ready to you know, uh, assist them in, in you know, solving break-fix issues at any time. Um, additionally, we do have a, a shared Slack channel uh, so that PlayKids has direct access to the solutions engineering team along with the business development team. Um, and that uh, actually allows us to communicate quickly and efficiently. Um, so if they run into any issues or have any questions about maybe uh, you know, a limitation in place uh, or maybe some type of uh, uh, you know, feedback, product feedback, uh, we can take that from them and take, them to the, take it to the relevant teams on our side. Um, and then on top of that is account management. Um, so kind of uh, not so much kind of those break fix issues, but making sure that uh, Diego and, the, and Play Kids um, are just satisfied with how they're operating on top of DO. Um, so we want to make sure that it's a, that they're being heard, listened to, and that um, you know we have some action items that uh, that we actually work on um, and just enable the success on top of DO uh, in the in the broader scope of things. Um, next slide, please. Um, so on the left side, it's just a couple uh, kind of like cloud primitives that we do offer. So Droplet API, um, our CLI Doctal, uh, which allows you to interact with the API uh, along with the Terraform provider. Um, that'll allow you to go ahead and spin up, uh, you know, provision resources and management, uh, manage them over time, along with uh, things that we've added like cloud firewalls, uh, which keep your, you know, services and applications safe, uh, manage databases and load balancers. Um, and then we do have a pretty good global reach with data centers all over the globe, and those are listed right there. Um, but specifically, PlayKids uses our CPU optimized droplet. Um, so like Diego mentioned, they profiled their game, um, but they did need, um, you know, something that's going to be a lot more stable and performant um, on the CPU side as well as the uh, the network side. Um, so it, you know, again, our CPU comes, our uh, compute optimized uh, droplets come with uh, dedicated hardware threads so that you're not worrying about like CPU contention with other users. Um, additionally, they're using our API. Again, they're using Rancher. Um, so that's going to be making, uh, you know, making changes to their overall infrastructure, spinning up and spinning down worker nodes uh, by making API calls. Um, and again, like you can access that using Doctal as well, or, uh, you know, some type of library or framework and which is, there've been plenty that have been written in various languages. So there's, it's accessible pretty much in any language you want to, you want to interact with it. In. Um, again, they're also using DBAS, specifically the Redis flavor. Um, this just allows you to kind of get rid of that management overhead so that you don't necessarily have to worry about, uh, backups or making sure that you're. Uh, actual data store is up and running. Um, so that's another uh, pain point taken away. And then cloud firewalls again. So making sure that uh, that your application and your services are are protected. So only open, uh, you know uh, services are only accessible to specific users on specific ports. Uh, and that's what cloud firewalls enables. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so here's a, a kind of just broad and general overview of uh, PlayKids uh, architecture. Um, so their backend services do run on AWS. Um, so like management API, matchmaking, which also has uh, some additional services uh, that it relies on, um, web API, and then Rancher, which manages their overall Kubernetes uh, clusters. Um, they also rely on GitHub Actions uh, you know, for their CI/CD pipeline. And then the largest bit of their workload is actually the game servers, um, and with the majority of that running on top of DigitalOcean. 
Um, and then within that same data center, they're using our Redis uh, DBAS uh, instance. Um, and that just keeps track of kind of uh, a state of all global games going on, uh, user list, and the matchmaking API uses that in order to properly place a new user uh, into a world. Um, next slide, please. Um, so again, like these are kind of the uh, services that DigitalOcean offers. Um, so obviously they go across different verticals. So like databases, we do have Postgres, MySQL, and Redis. Um, storage uh, is going to be, uh, you know, obviously your database, or I'm sorry, your local, you, Droplet does come with local SSD, uh, but oftentimes you do need something like object storage. So we have spaces with an integrated CDN. And then again, if the local SSD doesn't cut it, we do have uh, block storage uh, so that you can augment that. Um, and then on top of that, just kind of our, our networking side of things. So for security, uh, virtual private cloud, uh, cloud firewalls, and then load balancers and floating IPs enable you know you to actually go ahead and create a highly available system. Um, and then again, we do offer a DNS, a basic DNS system uh, to kind of just you know manage that for you. Uh, next slide. And then uh, management tools. So uh, we do offer the DO agent, uh, which can be installed, you know, when you provision or after the fact, uh, you provision a droplet. Um, and then again, you can also segment your projects or uh, based off of what we actually have as projects so that you can see what one team or one environment is using versus another. Or if you want to segment even further and really isolate, then you can go ahead and split off into different teams. Um, and then again, uh, we started off with standard droplets and then started branching off. Um, so we have general purpose and compute optimized, which uh, just kind of give you a more stable uh, platform to work on top of. Um, and then built on top of that, or another layer is Kubernetes, which does allow you to, again, build you know, uh, uh, stateless applications that are easily scalable. Um, and then there are developer tools. So the API, again, is accessible uh, through the command line, uh, using our, our doctoral, our CLI, um, using different frameworks, libraries. Um, the Terraform provider is pretty popular. Um, it makes it super easy to spin up uh, new resources, create new environments. Um, and again, uh, the other thing is like custom images. Also, if you want to go ahead and create an image somewhere else, use that as your golden image, import that, and just start spinning up resources based off of it. It makes it a lot faster than provisioning a server and then hitting it with a configuration management tool and installing all the dependencies You know, when you really need uh, to scale up immediately. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so one of the uh, really like shining factors that kind of it helps out, especially with like Diego uh, and Play Kids uh, with their use cases, uh, our bandwidth pricing. Um, so we don't charge for any ingress, any data going into our data centers. Um, we're not going to be charging for that. And um, like Diego mentioned, they do have an allotment. There's worked out well for them. Um, uh, so that they don't necessarily have to pay overages. Uh, but if you do, it's only one cent per gigabyte after that cap, um, which again, like compared to most other cloud providers is it, you know, we're, we're beating them on that front as well. So, and those savings over time do add up. So, I mean, if you're, you know, hundred thousand a month, something like that, then it, it can add up to quite a bit of money at the end of the year. Um, and then simplicity and transparency. Um, again, like we just charge a simple flat rate across the globe. It doesn't matter what region you're running in. We don't charge, uh, you know, a, a certain amount at one point or one time of the day or, a, you know, depending on the region, it's all just one cent per gigabyte per month after you uh, hit the bandwidth allotment cap. And then next slide, please. Um, so, yeah, this is just a quick quote when we're chatting with Diego. Um, I'll just go ahead and read it for you. So, our game would not have been viable without DigitalOcean's low pricing. Our costs would have been 8x higher. It would be much harder for our game to make sense financially and maybe would have to shut it down. Um, to me, I mean, that, that's pretty profound. Just like messing around with Play Kids, uh, Play Kids X, uh, PKXD specifically, um, you know, you want those games to exist, especially with something, you know, like this pandemic going on. Uh, it's pretty important, uh, not just from like a business standpoint, but also like for people to be able to relax and being able to have access to a game like this, uh, you know, can be critical in some senses. So um, we're definitely happy that we can support play kids and, and give them an environment that they can thrive on. Um, next slide, please. Um, 
So these are some more quotes uh, from other games that are running on top of us. Those are accessible. Uh, if you want to check those out at do.co forward slash gaming. Um, but yeah, we do have a, quite a bit of other uh, game creators running on top of DO. So go ahead and check that out. Yeah. Thank you, Diego. Thank you, Fabian. Thank you for such an insightful talk. We've had a lot of questions coming in. I'm going to start off with the first one. Uh, Diego, this is for you. Have you had to modify your architecture to handle the growth of your game? Or has it been the same with Kubernetes, Agnes, Rancher, and all of those? Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, one, one of the most important things was that our, our we knew well what, how our game ran. Uh, so we knew how much CPU mem and memory we needed, how much bandwidth we needed. Uh, we actually made some optimizations from the bandwidth standpoint. Uh, more uh, concerned about uh, what we're actually transferring from from our game to our game server, but by leveraging uh, Docker and and, and put, putting our, our game server to run inside containers, uh, that's one of the advantages that you get. You don't have to concern a lot about where you're running your game server or if it's running on a, a, a machine in, in, in a bare metal machine, if it's running on your laptop, if it's running on a cloud provider, on DO, on which data center it's running, uh, because you always know that your uh, environment is, is well known, known and you have the, the resources that you, that you need. So uh, by Putting our game server to run inside containers, you actually uh, don't have to concern with that, and we can just replicate it to run uh, as as many replicas as we need without have to having to change what's running inside the container. Thank you, Diego. Uh, Diego and Fabian, uh, this is for both of you. How many servers does PlayKids have in Dio, and what size are these servers? Okay. Uh, actually, it varies. It, it varies uh, from time to time because our the curve of, of connected users uh, varies a lot during the day because most of our, our of our users are from Brazil and US. So at night, uh, we have like um, three to five uh, times less players connected than during the day. But the amount of servers are, I think we're getting to, at one point we got to uh, 350 or 400 um, uh, droplets running. And they are C4 droplets, which, which I think have eight virtual CPUs and 16 gigs of, of RAM. Is that correct, Fabian? Fabian, you're on mute, I think. Sorry about that. Um, no, four cores and uh, eight gigs of RAM. So okay. it's two to one ratio for RAM to CPU. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Fabian knows better. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Fabian, um, this is for you. Does Agnes support any canary release strategy, aversion to a limited number of containers during a time? Yeah, that's actually uh, up to you. Uh, what Agnes uh, actually supports is the concept of fleets. So we, you actually tell Agnes, okay, I want a fleet running this uh, Docker image, and I want this many replicas, and I want want you to scale depending on whatever uh, metric that you want, but. Um, the default is to uh, you define a, like a, a, a buffer of, of ready uh, replicas that are not being currently used. And what Agnes will do is uh, will, uh, track uh, which replicas are currently being used by your game and which are not. And it will always uh, tend, try to uh, keep a given uh, number or percentage of, of not being used replicas, so it can handle 
uh, any uh, changes in your, your, your demand. And concerning deploying a, a canary or a beta or whatever uh, kind of deployment that you're trying to, to make, it's up to you. You can, what we do, we actually deploy multiple fleets, one fleet for each version, and you can uh, have a fleet that's a, a canary. And uh, in your matchmaking, uh, you have to uh, direct your player to a canary or a specific uh, fleet. Uh, so Agnes supports it through supports multiple versions of your game running uh, concurrently, and each of them will scale uh, independently. So if you have a canary, you, you can you can do it. Thank you. Fabian, would you like to add uh, to that? No, I mean, Diego pretty much covered everything in detail, so no worries about now. Okay, there are a couple of questions for you, Fabian. Um, if you're new to containers or Kubernetes, where would you recommend I start to learn? That's the first part. Oh, okay. Um, oddly enough, so uh, Kubernetes documentation is pretty good, but oftentimes it's a, maybe a little stale. So I would probably go online, take a course. Um, uh, so like I personally went to Udemy and actually just took courses on there and then started working with it. Um, so that's probably gonna be your best bet. There's also getting started with Kubernetes. I believe Kelsey Hightower wrote it um so that's a definitely a good book also yeah thank you the next one Fabian um it's about our support how do you communicate with your team on slack and do you have premium support um how do I communicate uh, communicate with play kids in, uh, uh, yeah yeah and in in general does DigitalOcean have premium support um so just communicating with uh, we have a shared slack channel so obviously like they have some members um and we have some members inside um specifically like we have some from our customer success team so they're easily accessible also since they're 24 7. um i do have to sleep sometimes um but <laughs> yeah if diego has any issues or any questions uh, maybe there's like an artificial limitation in place for security reasons on our side um or they're going to be scaling and need to you know check up on like capacity or something like that um that's you know he'll communicate that to us and then we easily quickly just jump on uh with him um oftentimes like we're setting up meetings so uh, we may jump in like a google meet um and kind of chat about what's going on um but it's usually you know it, it, it's pretty quick uh painless obviously <laughs> so and not only that but i mean it, it's also fun in slack because you can share gifts and stuff like that so we're usually uh chatting and messing around in there um what was the second part of the question Premium support. They wanted to know about premium support. Uh, yeah, so we do have a premium support offering. Um, so for that one, I would say reach out to the sales uh, team, though. Um, and yeah, so to get some more details on that. Uh, the actual uh, the link will be in the next following uh, couple of slides. Yeah, I think Mohan, uh, my colleague Mohan, has already shared the link on the chat window. They can okay. grab it from there. It's do.co slash contact hyphen us. Uh, question for you, Diego. Um, they want to know about tools or engine used for mobile development. Okay, uh, our our games are built with with Unity, uh, so that's all. Uh, yeah, we only use Unity. Uh, we in the past we did some some things on places that were native in for iOS. And for our game server, we're currently using a, a, an engine called SmartFox, but uh, to fit better our needs, we're currently building our own solution for, for the, for the uh, network engine, actually. All right. Thank you, Diego. Um, one more for you. Do you have your own scripts or programs that talk to the DO API to manage your droplets? Or does everything go through the tools that you mentioned during the presentation? Yeah, uh, we are currently using Rancher to uh, automate the scaling of our uh, machines and everything, and manage, manage them uh, inside Kubernetes. Uh, we actually had to build some some custom scripts. Uh, for Rancher specifically, that are using the 
DigitalOcean API and to deploy new new droplets and and shut down droplets that are, are being used. So yeah, we have to do a few custom things uh, inside Rancher for it to communicate well with with DigitalOcean. Thank you, Diego. Um, I think you covered a part of that during the presentation. Could you also speak to your multi-cloud strategy at Playkids? Yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, uh, we our strategy is to leverage the what we what we, what we have best in, in each cloud provider. Uh, with DigitalOcean, we we got uh, a really awesome pricing from a, a, a bandwidth usage uh, point of view, as uh, Fabian talked a little bit. And uh, we are, and we also uh, have great support from, from Fabian and, and from DigitalOcean. So that's great for us for uh, that we're running uh, hundreds of, of machines with them because then we have the their support when something goes wrong. Uh, but we actually use other cloud providers. So with AWS, we actually use uh, a lot of their services that are not provided uh, currently by by Digital or the other cloud providers, uh, like uh, the DynamoDB that database. And uh, we actually tend to be concerned about uh, having be it's easy to deploy and migrate from one, one cloud to another so that we can handle any uh, disasters uh, or any problems that we have with a, with a given uh, cloud provider just to be safe and, and be able to uh, keep giving a good experience for, for our players, even if, if something wrong go, uh, happens. You mentioned about multi-cloud strategy. Is there something that you particularly enjoy working with DigitalOcean amidst other cloud providers, and how has it been useful in your use case? You can just simply say you like to work with Fabian too, but then what is it that is particularly um, you know, enjoyable working with DigitalOcean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, there are a few things. Um, are, I think that the, the first one was that was really easy to be into using DigitalOcean. Uh, we started using DigitalOcean because our name was growing really fast and our bill was growing really fast also. Uh, and we had to uh, search for, for other cloud providers that could uh, give us uh, a, a more cost efficient solution. So uh, testing DigitalOcean was really easy. We, I could quickly uh, create an account and spin up some game servers on DigitalOcean. So uh, I think that's uh, great for, for newcomers on DigitalOcean. You can easily, easily experiment and try it out without uh, spending a lot or, or taking too much time. And as an established user of DigitalOcean, I think that what's great is that you you guys are really proactive and are always uh, getting in touch, trying to know what we need, if we are having any trouble, or uh, if we you got if you guys can help us in any way. And also by having again by having and Fabian and Robert on our Slack. It's a little bit like having uh, you guys working inside our company because anytime that we reach the problem or reach a, a limit from the solution and we, have, we need this help, we could uh, in a few minutes get it solved. So that's actually really great. And uh, we only actually ha have that with other cloud providers by paying uh, premium support. Uh, are currently not paying too much support of DigitalOcean, but you guys are already uh, really uh, close to us. Thank you, Diego. Thank you for the kind words. Um, both of you can take turns to answer this. Um, given the time, I'm just going to ask last two questions. 
So given thousands of users simultaneously using games, how do you ensure redundancy and high availability? Yeah. Uh, yeah, as I said, we have uh, our, our game servers deployed in, in multiple data centers. <clears throat> so um, what we actually do our um, matchmaking service when a, a player is joining our game, uh, this matchmaking service will actually, will actually uh, try to find a spot in a, in a uh, or in game server to to place this, this player uh, and in the case of an outage or any problems in, in one of these data centers, our matchmaking can actually uh, redirect these players to to another data center. So what happens and has happened recently, uh, uh, we had a problem with one of our clusters and players that uh, usually were uh, allocated in that cluster were automatically uh, transferred to, uh, to another one. So uh, it, all, it all happens seamlessly. And, and our matchmaking service actually handles most of the work on that. Yeah, in this case, like specifically for gaming, like it is going to be the matchmaking service that's kind of key to uh, pushing players onto or recognizing the issue and then scaling up in a different region uh, and then pushing players over into their own reloading game state. Yeah, and another important part of all of this is that by having automatically uh, <clears throat> automatically scaling of our services in each uh, cluster uh, by rerouting our, our players to a new cluster, we, we automatically scale the resources being used in that, in that cluster and we don't have any problems with that. So that's actually really important because <clears throat> if we automatically detect a, a problem in one of our clusters, and we have to manually scale the other cluster, we would uh, start to have problems in the other clusters also. Thank you, Diego and Fabian. This is going to be the last question. Uh, any advice for budding entrepreneurs and gaming startups in the audience? Yeah, uh, I think my advice, my advice is to just experiment and release your your, your game or your product as soon as possible. Uh, make people use it as many people as you as you can, and get feedback and iterate in your product as much as you need until you nail it. And don't be afraid to to uh, to make a, a, a not finished product product public because it will never be finished, finished. so uh, just be in peace that you're, that you're trying and you're, you're striving to, to make a good, a good pro. Uh, mine would be <coughs> um, kind of planning ahead of time and then also uh, visibility into kind of um, essentially how, much, how, much, how many resources you're using, how much money you're spending just to make sure on the business side of things um, that you are staying on top of like expenditures and uh, that you have plenty of runway to continue again, like testing and things like that. So uh, just doing yeah. some upfront planning uh, will go a long way. Thank you. Here are a couple of links which was already shared on the chat window. If you'd like to know about other customers and what they're building on Dio, that's the link for you, do.co slash gaming. Mm -hmm. And as mentioned by Fabian about the bandwidth pricing, if you would want to estimate your costs, then uh, go ahead and check out this calculator, do.co slash bandwidth hyphen calc. And uh, Mohan has already shared that on the chat window for you. Diego, can we have the next slide, please? Recently, DigitalOcean as an organization is seeing a lot of interest from network intensive organizations, and they're reaching out to us for infra help. As a company, we are always on the lookout to help and serve our community better across the globe. So if you or your colleague in your organizations have infra needs, and if you'd like to talk to our technology experts and solution engineers like Fabian, uh, we'd be happy to arrange that for you. So just take a minute 
and fill out this form. Um, it's the first link that you find on this slide, do.co slash contact hyphen us. Uh, the data that we gather from this uh, form will help us understand your gaming use case and gaming requirements in specific. And we'll be happy to schedule a um, technical discussion with folks like Fabian. So please take a minute and fill that out. Um, while we give uh, the time to our audience to fill out that, um, Diego and Fabian, uh, any last thoughts? We're almost to the end of the session. Um, I mean, for me, it just uh, thanks again for doing this, Diego. Um, again, like, Part of my job is making sure that uh, you know you have the resources that you need uh, to kind of run on top of Do. Uh, but I, one of the most enjoyable parts of my job is actually getting to know my customer and their business. So like it's it's definitely one of the like the highlights of being able to actually do something with Diego like this webinar. Um, so yeah, just definitely appreciate the relationship building as well. Yeah, and thank, thank you, you for the opportunity to to do this webinar and thank you for all the help that you guys give us. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Diego and Fabian. Thank you for the time. And as I mentioned earlier, this Tech Talk is a series. So the upcoming Tech Talks will be promoted on Dio social channels. Feel free to check us out on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Um, on behalf of DigitalOcean team and PlayKids, I would like to thank all of you for being such a wonderful audience. Thank you for all the questions coming in. Uh, we hope to meet you on our next Tech Talk. Until we meet next, please stay safe and take care. This is DigitalOcean and PlayKids team signing off. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.